Well, we have uh, we have worship in prayer. We have worship in song. We have worship uh, by feeding our bodies with good food. Thanks to Dale and Nancy for a for a good meal. Uh, And now we trust that uh, God's word speaking in and among us will feed us as well. So, would you pray with Our gracious God, we ask now in this moment that you would feed us. We ask that you would feed us with your holy word and that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit so that our lives might proclaim the mystery of faith in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. We ask all of this in his name. Amen. Our lesson today comes from the Gospel according to John. It is the reading that is read every Monday Thursday. It comes from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17, and then skipping ahead a little bit in the story to verse 30, 31 through 35. So listen now for the word of God. Now, before the festival of the Passover... Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table and said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Holy wisdom, holy word.
Well, today is Monday Thursday. It's the turning point in this week of holiness, this holy week. After today, the events of the Passion begin to spiral out of control. After today. They spiral out of control, going from bad to worse, and from worse to worse still. We began just a few short days ago with Jesus riding triumphantly into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey amid a jubilant crowd shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. But as the week goes on and on and on, the energy and the enthusiasm of the crowd begin to wane. Ebbs and flows of people's perceptions begin to shift. The tides of support change as expectations go unmet. And those shouts of Hosanna that open the week become shouts of crucify him to close it. But before they do, before Pilate and the crowds suck the air out of the story, before the lynching of Jesus by mob mentality, before, before any of it, before any of this happens, time <coughs> slows down, as if to pause the story mid-telling. And Jesus gathers with his very best friends, his closest colleagues, share a meal together, eat together, to share a final word with them, a final <coughs> call to them. But what's interesting, instead of, a, of an emphasis on a shared meal, like we find in Matthew and Mark and Luke, tonight we find an opportunity for some teaching in the Gospel of John. Instead of an emphasis on the breaking of the bread that we find in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we find a basin and a towel in the Gospel of John. Instead of an emphasis in wine poured out that we find in Matthew, and Mark, and Luke, we find water. Water for washing dirty feet in the Gospel according to John. Because today end of John's story, on this Monday Thursday, Jesus changes wine into water. And I think, if I'm being honest, I, John is not my favorite of the evangelists, he's not my favorite of the gospel writers, but I think that we might need a little bit of this Jesus in our world these days. Sometimes it seems to me that we get a little bit misdirected in the church sometimes. We get a little misdirected in our pursuit of following Christ, especially, I think, during the season of Lent. We get wrapped up in our own comforts and cares. We spend, we spend a lot of time in self-reflection and fasting and prayer for our own concerns, our own spiritual journeys. We get caught up in sitting around the table at the Lord's Supper with our family and friends. It's kind of what we focus on during the season of Lent. And don't get me wrong, that's why I like Matthew and Mark and Luke so much. I, I like them for that very, that very reason, because I enjoy getting around the table with fam family and friends. I like sharing a meal with Jesus, the host, and with you all, my family of faith. And I like, I like being reminded of that new covenant that has been created in broken bread and broken body, in wine poured out and in blood shed, symbols of our new life and our new call in Christ. But sometimes, sometimes I wonder if we spend too much time eating our bread and sipping our wine in the safety of our sanctuaries, that we forget about John's Jesus. We forget about the Gospel of John. We forget about Mondi. Thursday, we forget about the summons to serve, to serve one another. We forget about the washing of feet and the waters of life. 
We focus so much of our attention on gathering around this communion table and on all the things that make us comfortable that we forget about the greatest summons of them all. That is the, the call to serve one another, the call to love one another dearly. But there's a challenge there also, right? <coughs> Here's the thing about the call to serve, the call to love. So easy to say, isn't it? And so, so very difficult to do at times. It's the call to love, the call to serve. It's no simple summons. I mean, washing people's feet, that's yucky. That's the kind of work that nobody really wants to do, right? It's the kind of get your hands dirty sort of work that's not for the faint of heart. Summons to serve and call. This is the very directive of Jesus' story. This is the very directive of discipleship in Christ. To go to houses of prayer or in the comfort of this fellowship hall. If we don't listen to Jesus' command in the Gospel of John, then who will go? Who will serve? Who will love? not you and me, if not us, then who? So to where will you go? Whom will you serve? <clears throat> How will you love? Because this is the summons of Jesus in the Gospel of John. All because John turns our attention from wine into water. Thanks, Pete.
As our Lenten Peace and Justice Initiative, we have been collecting grocery items, the food and the toiletries that you see before you at the, at the head of the room in front of the stage. Um, and those will go to, to fill our free little pantry and uh, to help to establish a food pantry at North Wilkesboro Elementary School so that we can help feed and care for the bodies of our neighbors. Tonight, you also see on your table a basket, uh, a basket in the middle of the table in case you feel so led to make an additional donation to our Matthew 25 fund. All of those funds go to help folks in our community who are experiencing financial difficulties of some kind. As we have said all along this season, all throughout this season, the journey of Lent and I would expand that to say the journey of faith is not just a path inward, but a path that sends us outwards to love our neighbors. And already we rejoice at the generosity which allows us to serve people of all ages in our communities. So I invite us all now to pray and dedicate all of these gifts together uh, to God. Let's pray. Holy One, in the presence of your people, we offer our heartfelt thanksgiving, our sacrifice of gratitude and praise. As we give our lives to you, show us how to love and serve you and how to love and serve one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> They come from north and south, from east and west, to gather at this table of grace. They come from North Wilkesboro and Trap Hill, from Wilkesboro and Moravian Falls, from Roaring River and Rhonda, from Miller's Creek and Perlier, all to gather around God's table of plenty. And it is a table of great abundance. It is a table here that does not belong to me, it does not belong to Amanda, it does not belong to our elders, our session, it does not belong to our church, our denomination, this table belongs to God and all are welcome to partake of this holy meal. If you are joining us from home, we hope that you too will join us for this meal. Let us give thanks to God. Let us pray. Our good and gracious God, we do indeed give you thanks. We give you thanks for creating us. We give you thanks for breathing life into us. We give you thanks for the gift of Jesus the Christ, who is our King. We give you thanks for his teaching, for his working in the world, for his lighting the way before us showing us a new and better way to live. And we give you thanks for the gift of the Spirit who infuses us with love and with mercy, with compassion and grace. We give you thanks for bread broken, for wine poured out, and for the binding us together as a people, your people, your children, and for our common call to love and serve those around us. For all of this, we give you thanks, and it's for this reason that we join our voices praying the prayer that Jesus taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, the night that Jesus was handed over, he was at meal you know, with his closest friends, the disciples. And at that meal, he took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. St. 
same cake and eats. This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. Saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving and death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will serve one another this day, this holy meal. So it's going to be a little bit different than it usually is, and that's A-OK with me. I'd like to invite just one person from your table, on the center of your table, there's a white, ovally looking plate. You may remember them from such events as Kirk Night. You may have eaten something off of them at some point. And there's a little bowl on that plate, and I invite just one person to come forward to bring that, uh, to bring that up, and we will place bread and juice on your plate. You'll bring that back to your table, and I invite you at that point to serve one another around your table, saying, the bread of life, or the bread of heaven, the body of Christ broken for you. Take a piece of bread, you can dip it into the juice, and serve yourself. We don't have to wait for each other this time. We are making this together as a family. So we'll invite you to do that now. Simply send one representative up here, and we'll break bread off for you and give you one to drink.
O Lord our God, we rise from this table knowing a love beyond our deserving. Thank you for giving us a place at your table, for serving us the bread of life, for offering us, even to us, the cup of salvation. The gospel is this. The bread line broken and the goblet of empty. Love is the trade, but death shall not have the final word. So go. Go out into the world that God so dearly loves, and be that be he and she who serve. Be he and she who love. Be he and she who shine light in dark times. So go. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ, may the love of God our Creator, and may the partnership of the Holy Spirit be with you and me and us this day.